The light in the landscape of Eastern Long Island has attracted artists since their arrival at the end of the 1800s. Here's a sampling of artists' response to nature. This is Image in Green from 1950 by Hans Hoffman, Oil on Canvas. For his pivotal role in its development, Hans Hoffman was considered the father of abstract expressionism. His painting and teaching resulted in a cultural shift to New York from Paris during the mid 20th century. Starting in his native Germany, then later in New York and Provincetown, Hoffman's evolution from foremost modern art teacher to pivotal modern artist brought him into contact with many of the foremost artists, critics, and dealers of the 20th century. In Europe, Hoffman befriended Henri Matisse, Pablo Picasso, Georges Braque, Wesley Kandinsky, Sonia, and Robert Doulanet. And in America, Betty Carsons, Peggy Guggenheim, and Jackson Pollock. Among his students were Helen Frankenthaler, Nell Blaine, Lee Krasner, Joan Mitchell, Louise Nevelson, Larry Rivers, and Jane Freilicher. Hoffman began to study art in Munich in 1898. Moving to Paris in 1904, he was deeply affected by the paintings of Matisse and Dolanet. In 1915, he opened his first school in Munich. In 1930, Hoffman moved to New York, where he taught at the Art Students League and later opened his own Hans Hoffman School of Fine Art, soon to become one of the most prestigious art schools in the country. By 1933, he lived and taught in New York and in Provincetown. By 1939, he was able to break away from the expressionistic landscapes and still lifes he had painted in the early 30s with the total abstract manner, notable for its invention, vigorous brushwork, and saturated colors. He used both geometric and irregular forms in his paintings. Hoffman taught that, the nature, that nature was the origin of art and that no matter how abstract a painting, the relationships between color, form, texture, and space conveyed the energy of that nature. He termed this artistic theory the push and pull in the images. Already 64 years old by the time of his first solo exhibit, at the Peggy Guggenheim Art of the Century Gallery in New York, Hoffman taught and painted until he closed his schools in 1956. Doing so enabled him to renew his focus on his own painting during the heyday of abstract expressionism. Hans Hoffman continued to create boldly experimental color combos and formal contrasts with a vol voluminous output powerfully influenced by Matisse's use of color and cubism's displacement of form that transcended genre and style from his early landscapes in the 30s to his slab paintings of the late 50s and his abstract works at the end of his career until his death in 1966. Next slide, please. This is the Evening Blow from 1972 from the American artist Robert Dash at his acrylic on canvas. Robert Dash was an artist, a poet, and a gardener. He was known for his painting and his writing as an art critic for Arts Magazine and Art News and for his garden, Madhu, meaning my dove in Old Scots, inspiring his bi-weekly gardening column, Notes from Madhu, for the East Hampton Star. He was born in Greenwich Village on June 8, 1931. Due to illness, he was homeschooled, spending many hours by himself developing interests in painting, poetry, and piano that would continue throughout his life. To escape New York, he went to Albuquerque, graduating from the University of New Mexico with a bachelor's degree in ethnology and literature. He returned to Manhattan in the mid-50s, where he became an editor for Noonday Press and an art critic for Arts and Art News while he painted at night. He came to know New York school poets James Schuyler, John Ashbery, Frank O'Hara, Douglas Crace, and Barbara Guest, as well as the painter Fairfield Porter, all of whom became lifelong friends. In 1961, the first solo exhibit of his work was presented at the Cornbleed Gallery. Like his friend Fairfield Porter, he painted what was around him, people, interiors, and landscapes from Madhu in Sagaponic. Purchased in 1967, over time those two scant acres evolved into his much admired gardens, interwoven with a cluster of historic 18th and 19th century farm buildings, serving as his summer and winter studios and living quarters fully immersing Dash in the natural setting of Eastern Long Island's rolling farmland and big sky, where he never practiced plein air painting. Instead of drawing by the water or out in a field, the self-taught abstract expressionists worked primarily from his vivid imagination and his personal response to nature 
and the world he observed around him. Robert Dash died with his dog Barnsley at his side in the summer house at Madhu on September 14th, 2013. And he said, presence remembered is presence still. Next slide, please. This is Farmyard East Hampton, circa 1880 by the American artist Samuel Coleman. It is oil on canvas. Born in Portland, Maine in 1832, young Samuel Coleman moved with his family to New York, where his father worked as a bookseller, a publisher, and a dealer in fine engravings, setting the course for his son, who by 1850 had decided to become an artist. Coleman is believed to have studied briefly under the Hudson River School painter Asher B. Durant. Farmyard East Hampton exhibits many of the characteristics of Hudson River School paintings, realistic, detailed, and sometimes idealized portrayals of nature, depicting the American landscape as a pastoral setting where human beings and nature coexist peacefully, often juxtaposing peaceful agriculture and the remaining wilderness. In this instance, the lack of human presence and the gathering storm clouds suggest the second wave of the Industrial Revolution as the population shifted away from rural agriculture communities to the urban centers with industrial opportunities. One of Samuel Coleman's best known works and an iconic image of the Hudson River School Storm King on the Hudson from 1866 is in the collection of the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington. Coleman traveled extensively from California and the, Ameri and the American West to France, Spain, and North Africa with a resulting focus on architecture and interior design, becoming an authority and a major collector of Asian decorative objects. In 1879, he collaborated with Louis Comfort Tiffany on joint projects, including redesigning the interior of the Mark Twain House in Connecticut. He later built a home in Newport, Rhode Island, designed by McKim Mead and White with stained glass windows of his own design. Additionally, he wrote two books, Nature's Home Harmonic Unity and Proportional Form. Samuel Coleman died in New York City in 1920. Next slide, please. This is Tidewater from 1996 by the American artist April Gornick. It's charcoal on paper. April Gornick was born in 1953 in Cleveland, Ohio. She graduated in 1976 with a BFA from Nova Scotia College of Art and Design in Halifax, Canada. Moving to New York City in 1978 as a painter, she was drawn to the work of the photorealists like Richard Estes. Gornick describes herself as, quote, a painter, drawer, and printmaker of unpeopled landscapes, end quote, even as she considers herself a conceptual artist. On conceptual art, Saul Lewitt said, when an artist uses a conceptual form of art, it means that all of the planning and decisions are made beforehand and the execution is a perfunctory affair. The idea becomes a machine that makes the art. April Gornick's works with oil painting and charcoal drawings use colors that are at times subdued and muted, even verging on monochrome. Above all, as she puts it, light is the prime mover. Gornick does not work on plein air, but from memory and imagination, and has stated the use of a computer for sketching and collaging to be an invaluable preparatory tool for her work. Her fictitious landscapes merge the natural and the imagined, encouraging the viewer to slow down to envision alternate realities, as these images, although familiar, often evoke an emotional impact with a sense of tension or unease, leading the viewer to anthropomorphize and inject their own storyline. That would be attributing human characteristics or behavior to something other than a human, a god, an animal, or an object. She manipulates the scene before us with various kinds of brushwork and image making to attract and disperse our attention as to how we respond to the world around us. April Gornick lives and works in North Haven in Sag Harbor with her husband, the artist Eric Fischel. Next slide, please. This is Ocean Desert number 60, Atlantic Ocean, November 2013, by the German artist Renata Aller. Renata Aller is internationally known for her ocean photography beginning in 1999 of one singular spot on the Atlantic Ocean from the balcony of her home on Dune Road in West Hampton Beach. She is photographed here from the same vantage point at different times of day, year round, capturing dramatic changes in weather and sky, evidenced by the wild range of color and light 
with the only variable being the tilting of her camera up or down to emphasize sky or sea. At age eight, using an Agfa Clickbox camera, she recorded family vacations, camping or mountain climbing, limited to one roll of film for a total of eight images. By age 15, she was attending an all boys school with an advanced art program studying painting, sculpture, and finally photography. Her use of a high definition digital 400 millimeter lens enables her to shoot from a distance where she composes her images on site without cropping or changing the composition only using software to subtly enhance the colors before creating large-scale digital ink pigment prints on archival paper. In 2019, the Parish Art Museum exhibition, Renata Oller, The Space Between Memory and Expectation, the artist explained, is another way to describe this state of stillness and transition. Next slide, please. This is a RAIN study from 1958 by the American artist Agnes Martin. Agnes Martin was a Canadian-born American painter who became well-known in the mid-1970s for her spare canvases of geometric lines and grids. What distinguishes Martin's work from the other minimalists is her light touch reflecting the environments in which Martin found solace. Her use of delicate, barely discernible color, along with an insistent horizontal line, leaves an evocative sense of landscape, specifically the desert in which she spent so much of her life. Martin was born to Scottish farmers on the remote Saskatchewan Plains and later spent many years living on a secluded mesa in New Mexico. These flat spring landscapes translate strikingly within Martin's use of the horizontal line to indicate visual plane. Likewise, her selected color palettes reflect various moments of comfort and contentment. During the last years of her life, Martin was the subject of a documentary with My Back to the World, which offers an intimate portrait of the artist in which Martin says of her works, if you wake up in the morning and you feel very happy about nothing, no cause, that's what I paint about. The subtle emotions that we feel without cause in this world, and I'm hoping that people, when they respond to them, will realize that their lives are broader than they think. Next slide, please. This is Alexis Rockman, American from uh, born in 1962 in New York City. On the left, we have Regal Fritillary uh, from Montauk Down State Park, and on the right, Leatherback Turtle from Townline Beach. Alexis Rockman has been described as a contemporary version of a 19th century artist explorer in the tradition of Albert Bierstadt and Thomas Moran. His interest in science, history, and humanity's impact on the planet was inspired by his childhood visits to the Museum of Natural History in New York City. He studied at the Art Students League and Rhode Island School of Design, receiving his BFA from the School of Visual Arts in 1985. Since the late 80s, Rockman has collaborated with local environmentalists and naturalists with travels including the La Brea Tar Pits in California, the Essequibo River in Guyana, the Amazon rainforest sites in Tasmania, Madagascar, all the way to the Fresh Hills landfill on Staten Island. In 2014, he focused his attention on our East End community, exhibiting 93 images of indigenous flora and fauna from natural settings, and rather than paint, incorporating organic materials from the local sand and soil. During the PAM, the Parish Art Museum 2015 exhibition, Alexis Rockman East End Field Drawings, Education Director Kara Wingfield worked with Rockman's in artists, in, as artists in residence to develop the hands-on workshop experience for children of the East End schools, exploring the impact of human activity on the natural environment. In November 2019, Rockman returned to the parish with the Cuyahoga River, an epic panorama chronicling the river's history from its glacial beginnings to the 1969 pollution-fueled fire that devastated Cleveland's industrialized landscape. Alexis Rockman lives and works in New York City. Next, please. And last is spent cases from 1998 from the American sculptor Michael Combs. This is mixed media with carved and painted cedar and an 1890s gunning skiff.
Michael Combs work is inspired by generations of Long Island Baymen as he explores the loss of environmental innocence in a synthesis of contemporary art and maritime tradition. His sculptures resonate with his own personal heritage and a view to the future. Combs uses lures, traps, and tricks that ensnare our eyes and ambivalently mock the masculinity attached to the hunting and decoy carving that has occupied his family for generations. Born in 1970 in Huntington, New York, and growing up on Long Island, Michael learned about hunting and waterfowl carving from his grandfather, Captain George Washington Combs, and his father, Captain Jack Combs, who were working fishermen in the Great South and Peconic Bays. Year round, they fished, hunted birds, and acted as hunting guides. Combs said they really did work off the land in something like a Native American style. They moved around to where the fish were, working 365 days a year on the water. Rather than carry on the family tradition of living off the land, Combs chose to pursue his study in art. In 1990, he moved to New York where he earned his BFA and MFA from the School of Visual Arts. Combs' work has been included in Parish Art Museum exhibitions since 2004. In 2014, he received an artist spotlight in the Parish Roadshow with installation Outhouse at the Halleck Dilt State Farm in Riverhead. In 2014 through 2018, Spent Cases was on view in the museum's permanent collection installation. And in 2016, Daisy Chain was on view in the ex exhibition Radical Seafaring curated by Andrea Grover for this, who was the Century Arts Foundation Curator of Special Projects. Michael Combs lives on the North Fork. 